In the year 1621, the Pilgrims held their first Thanksgiving feast. They invited the great Indian chief, Massasoit, who brought 90 of his brave Indians and a great abundance of food. Governor William Bradford and Captain Miles Standish were honored guests. Elder William Brewster, who was a minister, said a prayer that went something like this. I took a picture of the sun at f1.2. How crazy is that? That's that is Mark, crazy. That is Mark Dalzell's quote of the day. How, how crazy is that? That was properly exposed. I should also add, it wasn't just a pure white frame. How crazy is so, that? So, uh, film photography podcast is the name. Uh, film photography is our game. It is. Uh, Film. This is our films giving <clears throat> episode. Yay! Very uh, for, thankful. Formerly known as Thanksgiving episode, which we don't do every year, but we've done a few years. A few yeah. years we did the marathon. Oh yeah, where we have a show Thursday. We just Friday, sat here Saturday, for twenty four hours. No, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, <laughs> and we yeah. raise money for film charities. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but this is like films giving here in the U.S. So, 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 what is today's day? Films giving Thursday. It's, I know it's Thursday, but what, when does the films giving fall on? Thursday, November 23rd, 2023. That's what today's date is, of course. Films giving. We're thankful f- thankful for film. Yes. Uh, make thanks. Sure. Thanks. Happy thanks filming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty exciting. And yeah, you sound very excited. I am. I'm actually more excited. <laughs> I'm more excited than you think. FPP, yeah, this is the place. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have some letters. <laughs> My name is Michael Ross. I'm here with Mark Dalzell. Hello. John Fidelli. Hey, how are you today? And this is a great episode. We're going to be doing a camera review. We're going to be, ta- we're going to be talking about a lot, of, a lot of FPP films. Yes. And the reason we're talk- going to be talking about a lot of FPP films is because Mark Dalzell has been like, so he'll come over and I'll flip him the film. You know, when I, when I flip a, f- a roll of film to someone, I don't expect anything. Immediate results. No, I don't expect right. immediate results. I don't expect like any enthusiasm. But Mark, you get very enthusiastic about your results. I do. The weirder it is, the more enthusiastic I get. And that's like, to <clears> me, <throat> that's exciting because the, the process of you know testing, marketing the film, getting the film out to the public, it's like you kind of lose the excitement in that whole process. You need fresh eyes. Yeah. You need a fresh perspective. You also like it because no one else likes it except me. You like my enthusiasm because yeah. I am the all the enthusiasm. So uh, let's open up with a, with a, a letter. I'm going to have you read this letter because I can't pronounce the name. <laughs> what makes you think he's going to do it? This one's from Joe. It says the name is Davey, and then there's some... But then it says how to pronounce your name. It says Brownings. But I don't believe that's actually... How to spell it. I would say I would say it's, it's spelled B-R-U-Y-N... And this is where it goes off the rails. B-R-U-Y-N-I-N-C-K-X. Maybe it's like... Uh, so I would have said like Brunix. Is it like Celtic or something? Davey Brunix. But he says Brownings. Anyway, after all that, it's a very short message. It just says... This Hi. is from Davey. It says, hey, stop making fun of my name. Best regards. Mm. No. Hey guys, I've ordered your ECN2 kit, and I'm absolutely loving it. Wish I had started developing with a separate bleach and fixer a long time ago, because the results are phenomenal. Hope you guys will have this kit forever. Mm. Just have a question about whether or not I should start adding time to the developer step after a certain amount of rolls. Great well, question. you've asked the wrong person. Well, I... I <laughs> you never stop. <laughs> I told Davey, I mean, traditionally with those ECN2 or the C41 kits, like, the, the time is the time. As it ages, I never add time to you. No. No, no. It's, but it's, you sh- technically should. You could. I don't. To get, the, to get the same results, you but, should. But I don't know what the specs are regarding yeah, that. I don't, I don't either. You know, so, but there are a lot of, I'm not saying Davey is, but there are a lot of people who develop at home who are very, you know, Tech centric. I mean, mm-hmm. like Matt Mirage is very technical right. about yeah. the times, the temperature. You know. I'm the same. No offense at all to those people who are very technical. That's cool. That's just not the way I do it. Mm. I have a I have a year old bottle of D76 that's starting to get nicely chromed on the inside because <laughs> I've run like a hundred yeah. rolls through it. I, so I, I can only t- and I told Davey in an email. I said I can only tell you what I know, which is what I do, and I don't add time to yeah. it. But the thing about this is, you know, in the FPP online store, there's an ECN2 kit, which is also good for C41. We're talking about developing your own color film at home, by the way. 
And there's also that old, that that older, you know, well, we carried much longer the C41 kit mm-hmm. that had the developer, Blix, and and uh, stabilizer, stabilizer. And then we kind of, and that's like thirty two dollars. The ECN2 kit we sell is nineteen ninety nine, and that's the newest kit, oh. and that is what we push because I think we all feel it's great. And that is developer, bleach, fixer. And that's what this guy is saying. Hey, I wish I, I knew about this sooner. I don't know what his phenomenal results are. Now I'm curious. Well, I, I actually I have C41 and I have ECN2 mixed, and I never use the ECN2. Hmm. Well, Maybe at, I should do like a side by side. Well, he's at at you know the at symbol the underscore film underscore fellow. Oh, the film fellow on Instagram. I have to check him out. I've only I'm only using the ECN2 kit now. So once you get used to something, that's what you do. Yeah. But, but there are a lot of customers for the FPP online store who are waiting for us to get the original C41 kit back in because they. So a lot of people don't want to make the transition to a different kit mm. for whatever reason. Well, they, they're used to doing it that yes. way. Well, I was going to say, the way this brings up a really interesting thing, though, which is you gave me the ESCN2 kit. I mixed it. It's in my cupboard. And when I do like those vision films that say ECN2, I use the ECN2. But otherwise, it would never occur to me to just develop C41 in it. I didn't realize until you just said it two minutes ago that I could just develop my regular film in it. So you still have inventory on the original C41, the developer bl- Blix stabilizer. The the new C41 kit that doesn't have a stabilizer. Is that the new one? No, that would be the ECN2 kit. Oh, well, I got a C41 kit that was missing the stabilizer. Oh, you so, so I do developer Blix fix. <laughs> or like developer bleach fix, basically, because I was missing the stabilizer. But anyway, that's beside the point. But yeah, so I didn't realize that ECN2 you could just use as a C41 developer. So yes, absolutely. I, I'm going to try that. Well, maybe that's the, maybe that's the thing. Is some people don't realize, like me, that you could do that. Next up, Joshua Fritz. Jersey City and Brooklyn of around 1980 interests me. I wish I had you as a friend back in those better days. I'm just playing nice fun with you asking if you eat at Jersey Mike's Subs. Jersey Mike slices your sub right in front of you, see? The slicer, the meat and cheese, it has a rhythm. That's the main reason my nickname is Sammy Boy. I like deli food sandwiches. He is Jersey Mike. That's, it's, it's, I mean, that's a Jersey it's, email, But the right? topic is I just turned 56 day before Halloween. So, where's he from? He's a fan of Jersey City in Brooklyn, but where? He doesn't say where he is. He doesn't say where he's well, it's from. Well, so no. funny he says Sammy Boy because whenever I'm texting John and he's coming in on a Wednesday, I say bring a Sammy or hey, are we getting yeah. a Sammy? Yeah, that's what we say, Sammy. Yeah. This is the actual Sammy Boy. Yeah. Oh, that's Sammy the guy. Boy. Sliced right in front of you. It's a Jersey Mike's thing. A sub above. Well, Sammy's having uh, you know having having fun. Good for you, Sammy. Yeah. Live it up, laugh it up, buddy. Um, Do you go to Jersey Mike's? Do you? I, I haven't been there in years. No, I haven't been. I think there's one right over, over here in Fairlawn. Really? Right on 208. I haven't been to like one of those places in I haven't many been years, to like, like a, a sub subway. shop. What was a place where they used to like run it under the oven real quick? Subway. Quiznos. No. Quiznos. Well, sub, Subway does it. Yeah. Quiznos was the best. Oh, yeah, they went out of business years shit. ago. You want to toast it and then they put it under like a little conveyor, a conveyor belt. Like the, like the pizza, like the Domino's pizza conveyor belt. Oh, it was great. Yeah. There's a great place uh, if you're if you're near like the Philly area, North Delaware is uh, Capriati's. They're the best. Capriati's. Yeah. yeah. Uh, John. Free plug for Capriati's. John Parisi is asking about 127 film. You remember 127 film, right? Like. It was yesterday. Yes. Well, it was like it was yesterday. Yeah, I actually was. have two 127 films at home I have to roll some film for. Uh, you shot, either you, Mark Dalzell, mm-hmm. or you, John Fidelli, shot 127 film on the Jimages boat. I don't know who That was, was me. Mm-hmm. Yushika that was 44. Me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's not readily available. So this is from, from John Parisi. He says, I see, I see this film readily available on eBay as fresh, Shanghai, GP3, 127, mm-hmm. black and white. Hi. Do you know anything about it? Something you can get, question mark. Mm. So, you know about this as well? I do know about this, but Shanghai is not distributed in the U.S., so right. I would have to literally buy it on eBay, resell it at FPP. Mm. The, the dilemma is, and I've been asking around, is to find the film factory, and there aren't too many, that has the machines to roll the 127 film. Yeah. So clearly, Shanghai does. So it's one of those mystery, you'll find out where they like Norman with the 110. It's yeah, just some right? mystery yeah, factory. Like, I told John via email, I'm like, well... 
you know, we don't have other than like doing what you can do, which is just buy it on eBay. Mm. You know, but you know, there are a lot of people who don't buy on eBay. Well, like they'll buy it from the FPP store, but they don't. They're not eBay shoppers. Well, and what you can do, like if you're really, if you really want to shoot the camera, if you get a spool with a backing paper on it, you can load some 35 millimeter into yeah. it, and you'll shoot sprockets. <clears throat> it'll it'll work fine. You'll get sprockets, and it'll look cool and hip. We did a video. And that video is on our FPP mm-hmm. YouTube channel yeah. of loading 35 millimeter into 127 film. Yeah. Basil says, any idea when your IR, we have our FPP black and white infrared, mm-hmm. very very hot right now. Hot. Any idea when your IR film is coming back into 4x5, heading out to Yosemite on oh. October 1st to oh. work with Alan Ross, mm-hmm. who um, Matt Marash worked with for a yep. week, and I'd love to try it out. Ah, it's too bad. So, so, so. I was able to get oh. a pack of 4x5 to uh, Basil. Wow. Cool. wow. But wow. the thing nice. is, the company that put it together for us, right? So it comes in long sheets and it has to get cut. We don't mm. cut it here. We outsource the work. I thought 4x5 is 4x5. I'm not the 4x5 guy. Matt is. And I thought 4x5 is 4x5. Too big. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I get the 4x5. I yeah. send a pack to Matt and he's like, oh, Mike, this is 4x5. I'm like, yeah, I know it's 4x5. It's <laughs> actually 4x5. I'm like, I thought 4x5 four 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 was 4x5. Four 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 He's like, oh, man, it's really snug in the... Thing. It's like how a 2x4 is not really a 2x4. Yeah, you need... So it's like 3 and blah, 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 blah. Oh, it's like, yeah. you know, it's different dimensions, which I didn't, which know. I didn't know. I had a fire sale of our first batch of FPP black and white IR, which everyone loved and bought and because didn't care. Because it was 4x5. You have to cut it yeah. down in the dark, yeah. though. So uh, Basil was one of the recipients of one of those uh, initial packs, he says, I got a couple of sheets of the 4x5 film. I shot a couple of sheets at Tenaya Lake in Yosemite. And I love it, exclamation point. It says, and I love it. That's like something Mark Dalzell would say. And I love it, exclamation point. Yeah. I thought 4x5 was 4x5. I haven't printed in the darkroom yet, but upon scanning, the image jumps off the screen with that patented IR glow. I tried to trim one of the negatives to fit in my holder, but it was so crooked as to be laughable. <laughs> the other I persuaded into my generic Adorama holder worked perfectly well. That's what Matt said. He's like, you know, it's so funny because some holders it'll go in fine. Mm. In other holders, other brand holders, it'll be snug. Mm. Can't wait to shoot more. I'll send an image soon. Basil. So did you let Basil know that uh, it was actual 4 by 5 Yeah, everyone and... knew. I was very, okay. you know, transparent. What happened it. with something else once? I forget. I, I got a box of film that was actually 4x5 and I had to cut it down in the dark which was a pain in the ass how do you do that like I had like a paper cutter and it, like in the dark I, I had set the oh, stop with up the, with the so slide? I like one at a time I would, in, I would just feel it and then ow and then yeah, exactly <laughs> get my fingers like like one at a time through the whole box it was, was great except for all that blood all over yeah uh, when we come back we're going to be talking about FPP black and white specifically FPP black and white low ISO high contrast films how low can you go mm-hmm what kind of a Thanksgiving dinner is this? Where's the turkey, Chuck? Don't you know anything about Thanksgiving dinners? Where's the mashed potatoes? Where's the cranberry sauce? Where's the pumpkin pie? You were kind of rough on Charlie Brown, weren't you, sir? Rough? Look at this. Is this what you call a Thanksgiving Day dinner? Did we come across town for this? Now, wait a minute, sir. Did he invite you here to dinner? Or did you invite yourself and us, too? What's up? What's up? Hey, we're back. Okay, so what do you got over there, Mike? This is like uh, being out on Monty Hall. You're like my film friend. I feel like I'm on a quiz show now. You're going to start pulling stuff out and have to try and identify them. Like because I can't, you know, it's not. I can't find people that are like like you. Like I have, you know, waning enthusiasm. I'm usually tired. John, you've been kind of like tired lately. I'm always tired. Like you know, John and I don't have the excitement like we used to. No, I think because we're bogged down, like doing other stuff. Yeah, mine's been sucked out by children. But John has children. Look, it looks like you're driving a park. Now it looks like I have boobs. You're driving a bicycle. Oh, I have I have more enthusiasm for interesting film stocks than interesting cameras. Oh, okay. So we're going to go through a few different FPP 35 millimeter film stocks, and I'm going to bring them out and and quiz Mark as like, hey, have you shot this yet? Right. So the first one is FPP Hicon two three six nine. That looks like a spy. Well, no, I, you, but the, the, here's the thing: is that you just gave me a roll of the, the blue canister, hi-fi. the Hi-Fi, the recording film which I just shot last month, and it was really cool. And I told you. 
what uh, something with an exclamation point at the end, and you're like, what? What are you shooting that for? That's the old stuff. You got to shoot the new. I was like, what? Well, you just gave me this. Well, the high five we're almost run out of. All right. So if you're if you're listening at home and you shoot the FPP high five film. That's the one where every fourth frame has numbers across their actual frame. Yeah. Which is freaky. I'm the only one who doesn't like that. Everyone I've shown to is like, oh, it's so cool. There's yeah. numbers on it. I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, shot, uh, I shot a bunch of pictures at a cemetery. And um, oh, I yeah. actually took a picture of a headstone of the surname Camera, which I thought was kind of funny. And then when I developed it, I think you can read on the, on the edge of the film where you can see it says Eastman. I thought that was kind of okay. cool. Yeah, so what cool. is the ISO of that? Uh, this is... 25. Is it really? This is like in the middle of the range. You know what? This is fast. This is too fast for me. <laughs> that is DX coded. Really? That's oh, 25. Yes, that is exciting because you could pop that in to oh, yeah. your like point and shoot. No way. It'll, yes. It'll go down to 25? Yes. No shiz. That is exciting. Then give me one of those. Okay. I got a Nikon gave me a one. cool pick at home on one Okay, try. so that, that's exciting. Don't waste this on a Nikon cool pick. Give me it. No, he already gave it to me. Oh, shiz. <laughs> see, see, these, like, you know, these films have been around a few years. I f- I'm forgetful of like, oh, my God, that's DX coding. That's exciting. Yeah, yeah, that is. So DX coding is very cool. MZ3. Oh, this is an old one. Yeah, well, it's been around for quite a while. Yeah. Have you, so you've shot MZ3? I have shot one roll of this a long time ago, and I don't remember what it even was. Don't take my film, man. <laughs> this, is, this is ISO 3. Black and white ISO 3. And what does this one say? What's the deal with that Film gra- fine grain and super sharp. Yep. It's very, it has a nice creamy look to it. It's like creamy? a slow black yeah, and white creamy. ectar. Yeah. It's very, it's very it nice. It would be creamy if it's super sharp. Next up. Sharp and creamy. Now, uh, I'm guessing like you a, shot like with this. a good this, cheddar cheese. But I'm not 100% sure. But this film, like, if you haven't shot this, you're going to be like, oh, my God, this is my film. FPP super positive. No, I, never I can't had, believe yeah. this. How could he not? After all these, because I wasn't on the show for like three years, and you oh, never right. giving me stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what am I gonna do? Buy it? Yeah. No. Look at that. That's super slow. Five. Point. <laughs> oh shit. Not point eight. Zero point eight. Less than one. You may as well just call How it do you one. Meter ISO. for that. For crying out, you gotta do well, too have, much math. I have to use my light meter and then three figures. Super positive. So this is a, a high contrast film. Mm. That when developed in oh, normal developer yes. gives you a positive image. Oh, super positive. Super positive. Yeah, you know what else does that that's like ISO 1 is LPD-4. Yep. It, which is all, my all-time favorite stupid film. Which is hard to find. This is readily available. I don't understand how you get a positive image out of regular negative chemicals. It's such a mystery. It is a mystery. Uh, but it's I magic. love it. It's a, such a cool magic trick when I do that. How is it that we get a positive image out of a negative film? Super positive. Next up, this one's called Fine Grain 6. I I've never even heard one. of this one. I don't know that one. ISO, i got to put them in order. ISO 6, what does this one say? It says Pancho Chromatic PW film. Panchromatic, yeah. It's Panchromatic <laughs> film. So you, develop, you, so you have to develop this in a pan. <laughs> it doesn't say anything else on it, so what's the deal with this? Uh, and it's got like a handwritten label. It's great for portraits. Is it nice and thin? It's no, nice it's thin. Not, not, a, not, not an ultra thin film. No? No. Oh. Regular, right? It's, it's quite thick, actually. Is it? It's, oh, it's rather thick. Yeah, it's, it? a, it's a really nice I can't film. even bite through it. Oh. I can floss with it. So this is, what's wonderful about this is that you'll shoot these and you'll come back with a review. I'll shoot all these today. <laughs> Next up. There's more? Yeah. Wow. We haven't even gotten to the ones I know. Blue Sensitive. Have you seen this one? Uh, what does it look like? Probably blue. No. I, I've, I, <laughs> this one I've seen, but I, don't, I haven't used it. ISO 6 again. So but, it's black and white film, but it's blue sensitive. Yes. Meaning that it's uh, essentially, um, it, doesn't, it doesn't see red light. Don't shoot it with, like, don't shoot it with tungsten lights. Shoot it outside. And, but, if you but shoot what, it inside, what will it do? I always have so much trouble Nothing. with like what different kinds of filters and things do. But if you say it's blue sensitive, if I took a picture out outdoors on a sunny day with a blue sky and white clouds, will that make the blue pop more or like the does blue that would be it? darker? So that'll make a higher contrast between the yeah. clouds and the sky. Yeah. So blue sensitive would make for a more dramatic outdoorsy yep. sky picture. All right, and I, it gives uh, faces. You know that chromey look. Yeah. Gives it that kind of like chromey, old timey look. All right, that's interesting. Skin tone, but not, sh- but to not shoot oh, with so this warm light, lights. This light meter goes down to 0. 0.8. What light meter? I don't have that one. Oh, mine only goes down to three. 
Now, I, I think you shot with this film. You must have, but this film is for you. It's called Sonic. For you. This oh, is yes. not this is not the recording film? It, uh this is a sound recording film, but it's different than the different oh, than the it, it's hi-fi. a sound recording, but not the, yeah. not yes. the same. It's not oh, okay. the same one. This, no, I never heard of this one. Ultra oh, DX coded. Look at that. Yeah. And what speed? Twenty five. Twenty five. Wow, I think twenty five is as slow as you can code, right? Ultra I think so. Ultra high contrast. Like it is high contrast. Ultra con- high contrast. Oh, yeah, high contrast. It is high fine. contrast city. Oh. And orthochromatic. Yes. Oh. That's like, was that like x ray film? Was that what that was? Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. Want, I want to see that one. You want the DX coded ones? Yes. Because you pop them in your you got point and shoot. I my point and shoot. Just okay. put them in my Leica. We still haven't even gotten to the stuff I know. Okay, so this, so, I don't know if you know so about So crazy. This. this is, um, you know about FPP Sun one. You shot that. And yeah. You're, you're going to give a review on that in a minute. I'm a fan. Of- and this is, how about this? Blue Ultra. No. That sounds like a pot strain now. Yeah, these, oh, yeah it kind of does. Right? These days... They do. Here in New Jersey, folks, I don't know if you know, but marijuana is legal now. Hey, you want to get high, man? I got a joint here, man. I've been saving for a special occasion. It's legal in a lot of places. And now. when you go to the store, they have all these... Like, it's like FPP. It's like, yeah, blue. Man. hey, here's the Blue Ultra. Yep. Here's the Sonic. Yep. You know, here's the high contrast. Here's the high con. <laughs> hey, have you tried the MZ3? Have you tried the Sleepy Time? Oh, man. Fine grain That S? Blue Ultra kicked my ass. Hijo de la chinga. Is that a joint, man? So this... So what's the deal? This is color, but... It's color, but... And duotone. What does that mean? It's duotone. So when you develop it in, in C41 or CN2, you're going to get a yellow negative, but then when you scan it, mm. everything is going to be blue. But when you put it in the Photoshop, reds will pop. So if you shoot... I don't even understand what you're talking about. All right. We did many tests on, on millimeter with this. Yeah. 16 millimeter. So so the negative will be yellow. I had John and so Joey K... So when I scan K, it, it'll go blue. John, myself, and Joey K went to the roof, and Joey K had a red jacket on mm-hmm. for the specific reason that when you're color grading it, when you're scanning and then you're, you're grading yeah. the color, yeah, yeah. you could pop those reds right out. Yeah. Interesting. Now, do you do any color grading... In like Photoshop or Lightroom, yeah, yeah, a, a little bit. Not usually. Like I, I like the really weird effect you get out of the film itself, so I don't try and fudge it. Well, unless you, I'm trying to fix something to make it look normal. Well, but. well, well when you're shooting blue ultra, th- I mean, really think blue because you're going to have a blue palette. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you know, think in that aspect. I mean, like heavily blue or tinted. No, it's blue. like it's like light a light blue. It'll be shaded blue, and then the reds will pop. Like there are certain colors that will pop hmm. out. What about yellow? I don't know if yellow pops. Oh. Red pops. Is that that'll just go green? I guess. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, I can't get my head around that kind of stuff. I, that's why I have to sort of shoot it and then look at it mm-hmm. and be like, oh, okay, I get it now. So you took a roll of FPP Sun One. That's color uh, C forty one film. And yeah. what is what is. What does Mark Dalzell say about that? So I've always really liked low ISF, low ISO films because I tend to like to shoot with really wide open apertures. So it lets me sh- like go out on a sunny day and you know go to the beach on a sunny day and shoot at f one point two and still have shutter speeds of like a sixtieth of a second. Like you know not have to you know push the limits what of the shutter speeds. What do you have that are one point two? I have a, a Minolta uh, fifty millimeter and a Nikon fifty That's a one two. Yeah. Oh. I don't see too many, too many of those. That's that's the only lens I ever have on my F three, um, but uh, yeah, which is great. It's it's a little soft, but it's made up for by the crazy depth of field. Oh my god! So like I took there's a picture I just uploaded to the to the Flickr there uh, yesterday. Oh, I'm gonna go or look. recently what, that the, um, that little house in the woods. Yeah, that little batch. But there's one where I was just sort of out doing a, a walk on this like ferry trail in Milburn. You ever go to the ferry trail? Uh, I was doing this where people build these little ferry houses in the forest, and the sun was being filtered through the trees. Mm-hmm. So even then, like the ferry house picture, I think was a half second exposure. Uh, so I, that was all tripod. But then at one point, I just pointed it at the sun and I took a picture of the direct sun. Mm-hmm. But because it was one point two, I got this cool bokeh in the background. Like the trees are yeah. out of focus, but I'm taking a picture of the sun. Like how you know, it's just a really weird effect. So I'm on a site called Flickr.com, folks. F L I C K R. dot com. Remember Flickr? Well, you know, Remember? here we are, 14 years in on the FPP. Wow, I'm yeah. just treating it like it's new. This is a new site, folks. 
It's called Flickr.com. Yeah, you, you sent a couple of those. Yeah, that's great. It's just like, yeah, that's cool. And folks, you could um, go on Flickr and you could like join and upload. Yeah, even in the even in the shadows, there's detail. Yeah. So the color comes out a little greenish. Yeah. But, but uh, that's cool. Otherwise, you could grade that. You could slide that. I could. Yeah. And actually, when I, uh, it's funny you say that because actually, on one of them. Like, uh, I took two pictures of the same thing. Yeah, I see that. One of them is the way it came out of the camera, and one of them I did sort of correct a little bit and make it a little bluer. But they're both good. But you have a crazy, crazy bokeh, man. Exactly, because you're shooting 1.2 on a sunny day. It's crazy. Without having to use, like, ND9 filters or something in front of my my lens. But, um, yeah, actually, I, I just did an Instagram post today of that... Of of, a, of one the of the fairy house, the fairy house in the forest, yeah. And where, what forest is that fairy house in? It's the South Mountain Reservation, which is a big forested mountain that sort of is in the middle of where I live: Maplewood, South Orange, West Orange, Livingston, Milburn, like that area in New Jersey. And there's all kinds of hiking trails and dog parks and waterfalls and everything you can imagine there. How big is that fairy house? Uh, I th- it's it's, it's big like, enough for about three or four fairies, I think. Yeah, <laughs> you know, no, it's I mean it's like two feet wide, maybe two feet high. Like it's like a Barbie, you know, it's like a oh, little dollhouse. Like it's like a dollhouse, not maybe not a Barbie house, but and like it, a dollhouse. And it's just sitting in the middle of the woods. Yeah, as you walk through the the trail is maybe half a mile long, and as you walk through it, every mm-hmm. couple of feet, people will just build these little fairy houses out of like sticks or things, or mm-hmm. there's apartment buildings, and there's you know there's all kinds of cool little fun things. So I wanted to go out. Um, you know, Mr. Smart Guy thought, oh, I'll go out and shoot the fairy trail. It'll be really cool. And then I get there, and it's, like, heavily filtered through the trees as the sun is going down, and I'm mm-hmm. shooting ISO 1 film. So it was, oh, it was, it was a great result. It was a little challenging. And this, this is, like, a pumpkin? Like, did some animal, like, suck the energy out of that pumpkin? Which one? It's, like, a pumpkin that's deflated. Oh, that was that was actually a, uh, one of our jack-o'-lanterns oh. that was laying in the leaves and just kind of looked cool. It was actually, the pumpkin itself was actually gray. It's like freaking so blue. The, yeah, the, the, the colors are not weird on this. The pumpkin is actually like gray blue. Really? It's like an heirloom pumpkin. It's bizarre. So, uh, yeah, that's, that was not color shifted. That's so would color. you shoot with Sun 1 again? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that one I'm looking forward to shooting again. Again, just, I like the slow stuff, but the fact that that is full palette color makes it really interesting to me. Yeah. Because yeah. I tend to like to shoot in color. So you would go up to like Storm King on a really bright day and shoot yeah. some real low ISO film. Or like the next time I'm in Wildwood or something. Or the, you know, some, you know, next time I'm in Asbury Park or something. Mm-hmm. That's why I want to be out somewhere where it's bright have you from taken, every direction have at once. Have you taken any photographs of the hotels down in uh, Wildwood? The old uh, retro. There's not too many left. Not They're going really. quick. They're hard to shoot from ground level. I feel yeah. like if I was up on a ladder, you could get some cool pictures of signs. But you just need a really wide angle lens yeah. to get a picture of some of those. That's actually, that's the next thing that I, I want to get into a little bit is, I mean, we don't, what do I just do? We don't have to talk about it on the show show, but what show? Um, I was playing with, we were at Liberty State Park the other day when we were oh, shooting. Yeah. So this is Hattie at the little telescope looking at the Statue of Liberty, and she wanted a picture of herself looking at the Statue of Liberty. I was like, wait, 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 wait. So I ran like half a mile away, and I took a shot of her with my long lens on my phone, and it comes out like this. Holy crap. Which is so much cooler. Oh, my God. It makes me want to put my 50 millimeter away and just shoot with 200s. How, how long is that lens? It's a 10x. It's, it's just my cell phone. Oh. Then, that's, uh, that's just my cell phone. But lens it makes phone. me want to shoot with like, it, you know, this would be the equivalent of like a, I don't know what. 300? 300, 300? Yeah, 300 millimeter lens. How far back did you have to run? Uh, that's a few hundred feet from her. Okay. That's yeah, probably that's like 200 feet away. more interesting photo. I had to like run, you know, while she's standing. And I know that's hard for you, so. Exactly. Good I job. had the rest. But um so that makes me want to like take my fifty millimeter lens, put it in the in the See? cupboard and start shooting that long 500 again. Five hundred millimeter lens. Yeah, John and I was five hundred millimeter mirror lens. You got one of those? No, we have a mirrorless one for uh oh. is that an M forty two or what, so what do you call them out? My sixteen millimeter Russian film camera, Crash the Gorsk three, takes M four remember the M forty two screw mount? Yeah, yeah. of course. Got so, like a hundred of them. Yeah, there's like there's no shortage of M42 lenses yeah. here at FPP, but all of them are either like long lenses, zooms, like a 400 millimeter. Yeah. So your camera takes M42, just the, uh, native. My, my 16 millimeter camera takes the M42 cra- the cra- native. Oh, what is it? Is it Krasnikorsk three? Krasnikorsk. Krasnikorsk. Kalishnikov three. Krasnikorsk. Krasnikorsk three. Krasnikorsk. 
Krasnokorska 3. Hammerhead. Krasnokorska 3. Krasnokorska 3. That's Kabaska. Super positive. K3. Engelbert Got Pumperdink. It. So, the AK-43. As a matter of fact, here it is. Oh, what a coincidence. There it's right it is. next to you. Right now, I have a 17 millimeter Pentax lens on. This is a That's motion, a-, a Russian motion picture film camera. It looks like a carrying case for a frying pan. <laughs> yeah, it's really weird, right? That's cool. I have some really cool M42 lenses I never use if you want to do anything fun. Oh, that's like I, a kind I, of a... That's a super wide one. What is it even? Is well, it's super wide. It's 17 millimeter. Oh, 17, yeah. But for the 16 millimeter gauge, it's not super wide. It's, mm. it's wider. Yeah. But for 16 millimeter, uh, if you want wide, you want 9 millimeter. How that's, does, that's not going to look like super wide, like... Uh, no. What do you call it? There's, there's a lens that I would have to buy. It, it's... It's somewhere in like Moldova or somewhere over in the Ukrainian area. Mm. It's an eight millimeter. It's called eight millimeter Palang lens M forty two. Is is wideness what you're going for? For spire. I've always shot. I've I've always shot wide ever since the, the college days. It was always the Bolex, the nine millimeter lens. Mm. Influenced yeah. as a teenager by the Kubrick films. And what do you go for speed? Like what's how how fast a lens do you need? Uh, the fast. Like that one, one says three point five. Yeah. Mm. So this came with a stock M42 zoom lens. Here, oh, here it is. This is very exciting. Oh, everything you own is right next to you. It is. So, th- so it's like what? Like a 20 to 70 zoom? This is what came stock with the camera, which is a f1.9. Nice. 17 millimeter. It's like the size of a, it's like the shape of a Coke can. How is that 17, 17 millimeters? 17 millimeter to 70 millimeter. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay, to That's 70. Close. Yeah, yeah. Zoom lens. It's 20 to 70. It's close. But oh, I didn't realize we were looking at zoom lenses. Now, here. you're going to be familiar with this because. Yeah, like, that's the one. Like, like, there are too many of these in the world, and no one no wants one them. No one wants them. This is a 400 millimeter. That's crazy. That thing. You've seen these, right? You can play baseball with that. 400 millimeter telephoto lens. Back when I was in yeah. college, <laughs> there would be ads for that in the back of popular photography magazine. Really? Yeah, you'd always see an ad for the four. More like unpopular. So it's 400 feet, not 500. I was wrong. That's the lens. Millimeters. This is a 400 millimeter. Lens. 400, lens. 400 foot lens. 400 you must own foot. one of these, right? <laughs> oh yeah. They're mostly just for looks on the shelf because <laughs> I would never use them. Why don't you ever? Why have you never shot with a four hundred millimeter lens? Just, just give it a go. Well, cut. like I like I was just saying, like it never occurred to me how the cool a effect you can get, looks yeah, really good from a long lens. So it makes me want to go back. But I have I have a hundred lenses for every mount. Like I I got to go through. I have more I have more M forty two than anything, but I have more Nikon than anything else. You have any M forty threes? FPP Sun One Sun- comes also in thirty in sixteen millimeter. For this camera, so when's it coming out in 120? Oh, I, I got you there. Yeah, <laughs> that I don't know. Well, I yeah, I'm definitely in on the sun. That's I would stock up on that. And I would talk about the the FPP color 125, but you have such a stockpile of it that you never even notice it went out of stock, right? <laughs> <laughs> I I have a few roll. I might have four or five rolls of the old, you know, the whatever so silver was, label Svima 125. Svima 125. Yeah, which was my oh. favorite because I was. I was going really cautious with it because I remember like two years ago you said it's uh, our final rolls it's gone yeah, and I yep. think I think I bought ten rolls then didn't I, didn't I find a roll the other day of Svima sixty four or something like that FN FN sixty four yeah. Yeah. yeah great film it's in the back I've shot that it's on my shelf oh you found a vintage roll of it yes in the vintage yes. packaging yes in like original oh. packaging like, like from the seventies yes That's late seventies oh oh, yes. oh not an FPP one no no. I made a shelf on my wall of one of those old printmaker's drawers that the spaces happen to be the exact same size as a 35 film, millimeter film cartridge. And I, oh, for years, I've saved all my empty cartridges. And uh, as I was finally pulling them out, I found a like a Polypan F oh, canister yeah. that's just printed on white paper that you like glue stick to the canister. Like one like, of the original. Super low, qual- low, not low quality, but compared to your fancy, shiny, DX-coated uh, metallic labels. So whatever, like 10 years ago, those are literally, I would print out the stickers on Avery labels. Right, and exactly. Like, like a paper label. That's what I've got, yeah. sticker, you know, DIY city, right? Like super oh, yeah. DIY. Uh, now we're high tech with, uh, what would you call that? Vinyl labels? Yeah, vinyl labels. Like metallic labels are cool. So what else you got? I know there's more. Is oh, there? FPP. No, no, there's no more. That's it. It's different what? today. That's not enough? What's it's the seven rolls Oh, I film. thought we were going, what's the blue one that I have the picture of from Bermuda? Uh, 
When you say picture from book, the oh. one that you just said, my picture's oh, on FPP the... low ISO color. There's that one. ISO one point six. Right. So you basically saying, hey, I like get another roll of that because no, no, it. I'm just making sure that you cover all of your low ISO well, films. Well, since you've shot that already, and actually the wrap on the outside is your picture. <laughs> yeah. Like you've, that's been around a while. I like that film so much. I put my picture on the can. That's a really great film because it leans towards like a cyan. Yes. Like a nice, like, Caribbean blue. Exactly, which is where I shot it. And right. It came out amazing. Hilarious, yeah. right? It was perfect for that. Yeah, I was just wondering if you were going to, like, reveal some other new fancy stuff. Because, yeah, I'm always up for, I'm yeah, up for weird stuff. Yeah, you know, I'm work- always working on some stuff. Yeah. What's your weirdest 120 film you have in uh, stuff? F- the FPP Black and White X-Ray, which is on my list to talk about next. Oh, mm-hmm. I've, shot a, I've shot a few of those recently. FPP Black and White X-Ray is our, is our latest, newest FPP 120 films. Mm-hmm. And I knew Mark would really enjoy it because it's a high contrast film. What ISO did you shoot it at? One hundred. I just uploaded this yesterday too. This is that's some FPP X ray. Oh. Um, that's also from uh, Liberty State Park, but it has a nice little glow around. It, it. has a glow. Yeah. yeah, I like the glow. It makes it look like the pictures were taken in like 1942. Uh, which is really cool. Oh, that's awesome. This is the New York skyline. Which you can just barely see the top of the antenna. Yeah. Because the whole top of the city was covered with smoke. Anyway. Is that from Jersey City? Yeah, that's from Liberty State Park. Liberty shooting, State Park. shooting Battery Park City. Yeah, so yeah, I do. I definitely like the X-Ray. We've shot a few rolls of that recently. So what we're working on is to get the FPP black and white X-Ray film in 35. It's not currently on 35. Oh. Yeah, not 35. That's interesting that you only have it in 120 and not 35. Usually yeah. it's the other way around. Has to do with like the film sizes, like the native size of film. Mm-hmm. You know, like we've gotten so many emails requesting the Vision Three movie film, the color movie film in one hundred and twenty. Mm-hmm. But that's like a task because Kodak makes it in sixty-five millimeter in, on rolls, but one hundred and twenty is sixty-one point five millimeter. So literally, I have to find a facility to slit it, roll it. You know, it's like it's a project. Yeah. Hence the name, Film Photography Project. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we do all the heavy yeah. lifting. We put the project in film photography. Yeah, so I just haven't figured that out. And we had we got a letter a few shows ago where a guy was like, oh, hey, I bought this from so-and-so, and can you guys make it? And I'm like, I, I said, that guy's doing it in his bedroom or in his dark room. Oh, yeah, that's right. I remember that. Yeah, he bought a film slitter, hand rolling it. Was it, what was that? Wasn't it like, like eight twenty eight or wasn't it something really weird like that? that no, was, it was one twenty Vision Three, like five hundred P, two fifty D, just one twenty. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Occasionally, we sell the rolls of sixty five millimeter, and those are great for folks who are shooting the six sixteen one sixteen film. Mm-hmm. You, you have a few of those cameras, right? Yeah, tons of them. I have um, I have a a, a spool of um, a Portra one sixty seventy millimeter. In my freezer that I use, really? that I cut up for that, yeah. That you cut up? Yeah, that if I want to roll some 116, I'll use that. So um, so you're pleased with the FPP black and white x-ray? Yes, very good. Because that, you know, it's... The, I- these pictures that, I, that I, I should also say, that the, the pictures that I posted on here as my samples, this was taken on a full rainy day. Oh. I was standing out there in pouring rain taking them, which is why everything has a nice shimmer to it. Mm. So I haven't actually shot it in, you know, good lighting yet, but... Uh, I forget what, ca- what camera was this? Oh, this is the Coronet, which we haven't talked about yet. <laughs> the camera that I'm going to talk about today is what I used to shoot it with. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, that was shot with that camera, yeah. Okay. All of those the junk- Those pictures I just showed you that looked oh, like they were from the okay. 40s were shot with a camera from the 50s. We're going to talk about the camera when we come back from a quick break. But just really quick, is, that, is this considered like a junky camera or a really good camera? Junk. <laughs> and we'll be right back. Yes. Jersey Mike slices your sub right in front of you, see? The slicer, the meat and cheese, it has a rhythm. <laughs> Sliced right in front of you. It's the Jersey Mike's thing. A sub above. Hey, we're back. P.O. Box 264, Fairlawn, New Jersey, 07410. What's that for? Film photography podcast when we're on our break uh, we're like we've <clears throat> bottomed out regarding any trees yeah well, I mean no, we have a, oh I was wondering why you were just reading there. off the address out of nowhere like we're he's literally eating he's a eating cough it. drop because he <laughs> wants a candy so badly like is there anything <laughs> It's desperate. Uh, like, like, it's like, oh, is there anything here? And he was like, hey, there's a Ricola over there. And I yeah. gave it like a, a second thought. And I would like. And then he sadly reaches for it. Oh, well, that's good. Is it yeah. sugar free? <laughs> I don't think it's sugar free. Oh, good. So it's a real thing. So good if you're you. a listener of the show and you. What show? You know, 
feel sorry for us. <laughs> here, here we are on eating on, an expired Ricola. We're, here we are on films at Filmsgiving with nothing, no turkey. No, we have no food, no, no goodies, no, no giblets. Where's the mashed potatoes? Where's the cranberry sauce? Where's the pumpkin pie? So that's uh, our PO box. If you want to, see. you don't. You, I mean, send us. Send us nothing. Yeah. Send us something. Whatever. Send us nothing. <laughs> send us nothing. Yeah. <laughs> That's easy. We got an email from them. Hey, I just want to let you guys. I sent you nothing. Cod. So if you so if you're look looking for, for it, yeah. If you're looking for it, don't yeah. because I'm really sending you guys nothing. Yeah. John will be just reading off the names of people to thank who sent us nothing. This is. Uh, hey guys, do you remember a few shows ago we did the Tatankaman? Yeah. The intro to Tatankaman. Tatankaman. That was a good video game. Tutankhamen. Yeah. Now, when it was a young man, I can't believe you remember the stupid pronunciation. Just listen to your podcast for the first time and enjoy the topic on Harry Burton and Egypt. Harry shot Tankerman's tomb. Yes. Okay. Watch the recommended doc on YouTube as well. I don't know if you explore photographers from the past, but another amazing photographer from 1914 to 1917 was Frank Hurley. Hmm. He was the photographer on Ernest Shackleton's ill-fitted oh, Antarctic no expedition who created incredible images. Huh. Anyway, thanks for the podcast, Jerry. That's Jerry with a G. Mm-hmm. And in, in case you folks want to check out Jerry on Instagram, that's like the hottest thing right now. Although, folks, there is a new site called Flickr. You might <laughs> want to check that out. <laughs> Uh, Jerry's is at G E R M A T T on the Instagram. I guess that was his last assignment then. And I just want to say, <clears> listening <throat> to that, listening to that podcast, I mentioned that I knew how to now pronounce Tutankhamun. Yeah. But you had cut out the part that explained what we were talking about, which was when I was a little kid, there was a video game that you could get on the Atari. No, you said that oh, on the show. I cut joking. that out. I thought you cut no, it out. No, no. I, I, I don't remember hearing that. Oh. Is that, is that it? That's the actual box for the game. And when we were little kids, we always thought the game was called. Tatankaman. And then it wasn't until I was a teenager. Was like, How much oh. is Tatankaman video game going for these oh, days? It's got to be in the Tens. multiples of dollar. What what uh, what uh, game uh, console was that for? Uh, the one I had was for, it was 2600. Yeah. So, John, you think that Frank Hurley on Ernest Shackleton's ill fated Arctic expedition mm. bit it and like he was it, encased yeah. in ice just with his camera sticking out? That would be an interesting story to find the ending to. I don't know what happened to Frank Hurley if he bit it. Up at the Arctic. That's the way they'll do it in the movie anyway. Yeah. Speaking of the guy. Arctic, if you folks want to watch something really kind of energizing and exciting, there's something called John Carpenter's The Thing. Yeah. Wow. It's you see that? One. No. I know. I know what you're going to say. I hesitated because I almost just I've said yes it. to shut you up. But no, <laughs> I haven't seen it. <laughs> Would you do that on a movie night with Yeah, us? we should do that. I suppose. I've it's seen enough guy. clips from it that I've, I'm sure I've seen it, but I, I don't watch horror movies. I'm not a horror movie guy. Diabetes guy in it. Diabetes. Diabetes. <laughs> diabetes. <laughs> diabetes. <laughs> I'm Wilford Brimley, and I'd like to talk to you for a few minutes about diabetes. <laughs> Wilford Brimley's in it. <laughs> I know. I was Wolf. trying to think of a funny diabetes guy. He doesn't guy. say diabetes once. <laughs> he doesn't? <laughs> no. So it's a it's an interesting role for him. He does say diabetes. Mac, I'm okay now, Mac. Yeah. They lock him up. They lock him up. They Don't him ruin up. it. Okay. No. Save it for the movie. You know why you like it? Because it's really it's an adventure film. It is. It's not really. A horror yeah, I mean, film. like I like I said, I've seen. So I know the movie. I've seen. It's it's like you know what? I'm and I'm gonna you gotta you're gonna beat me up. I've never seen any of the Alien movies either. Well, I don't but care I've seen about so them. many clips that I feel like first I've seen them. Like I get it. Well, you probably saw the best parts of them. Yeah, exactly. I get it. The I first one it. is the one to see, by the way. Second. And Lance Hendrickson's in it. I like him. The one that uh, Cameron did, Aliens. Diabetes. Uh, All right. So, hey. What were we talking about, So, anyways, The Thing's a great movie. Aliens is a great movie, (laughs) unless you're talking to Mike. And then what were we talking about? If you want to see a movie, if you want to see something beautiful, when you said you Ar- want to see- Arctic, oh right, the Arctic. We're talking about yeah. You Curly said you want to see something Shackleton. good with the Arctic. The first thing I thought of was one of my favorite movies, which is Never Cry Wolf. You should check that out. Oh, okay. That's, a that's good an one. unknown Disney classic. I know that one. What uh, uh, Charles Martin Smith? Is yeah, you get to that. see his naked butt. Oh, okay. even more reason. <laughs> And not it's him. him and Brian Dennehy are the only two characters in the whole yeah. movie. And and wolves. <clears throat> and the, and the wolves and a couple of mice. Brian Dennehy. Any other? Any other? Oh no! There's the two. There's the two Inuit guys. I forgot about them. 
And of course, let's not forget about the the thing, the 1951 version. Also <laughs> boring. Up at, you think so? Yeah, I've been watching a lot of old movies on the Turner Classic movies. I get bored. There's a lot of them don't have music. Mm. So Is there a lot a of exposition. <laughs> they get, do things. You get ruined. There's, I mean, quite a few of them are very good, but a large majority of them are extremely boring. Sorry. Let's see if we can do a quick letter. Letters. We got letters. I read one. John, read here's the last a letter one. right now. A. <laughs> Thank you. We got numbers too. Oh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Fifty-six. Ooh. Here we go. All you have to read is the yellow part. Yellow. Can I read all of it? Yeah. Oh, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> Andrew Morose. Michael. Thursday, I listened to podcast number 302, 8 and 16 millimeter movie film. Yes! Oh, why are you making me read this one? <laughs> and at the end, promptly ordered some black and white regular 8 film, which was at my Philadelphia door by Saturday. Wow. Thank you very much. I also learned of your secret weapon, Dave, who we seem to get for free. Mm. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Yeah. So he's, people, he's locked in his little room right there yeah, right now. He is. So people, folks, Super 8, 16 millimeter, regular 8, like we oh, develop, scan, but like... All goes to Dave. Like we color grade the film. So like we have like a seasoned expert. He's like the Wizard of Oz behind the curtain. He's the one yeah. that does all the magic. The only thing we know about him is that every once in a while you hear a loud, sharp laugh. Yes. Come from his room. What's that John Lennon film? Skies, Skies Above Us? The documentary? documentary. Uh, I don't know. I didn't see it. Oh, okay. I think it's on Netflix. Dave color graded it. Yeah. And at lunch, we were talking about Yoko Ono. Didn't he do stuff for Moon Age Daydream? The Bowie movie? Uh, you we, guys. We did all of the... Yeah. We did scanned all, all the, the footage. Video. All the video. video. All the video. All the film and all the video. Any content that David Bowie had in his personal like VHS, like all sorts of wacky stuff. Mm. I have not seen the Moon Age Daydream yet. That's interesting. Yeah, I'm going to check it out. It's very trippy. So, he so. says, I also learned of your secret weapon, Dave, who we seem to get for free. Uh, I've had you process several rolls of my 8mm eight, eight film, but just the last one, Ektachrome 100D, I had scanned. While I like the rumbling of my 8mm projector, the scan is clear and sharp, and I'm enthused to use my Mac to add sound to your scanned work. Mm. I am an analog guy, but you've shown me some digital fun I can enjoy. That's because every roll I post, I add a sound mix to, mm. including my favorite, which is on 100D, and I showed it to John. I show it to John whenever I can. It's that pizza party one at Tom's yeah. house yeah. where we order pizza. And I just happen to have my camera. I see the, the car pull up. Like, the oh, guy. I'm going to shoot this. <laughs> How you doing? Here's your shit. A guy gets out of the car. You, you captured it all, man. Eh? And, like, he's just, you know. A guy. A guy. And he gets out. But he's, like, you know, you know, he's just huffing, like, huffing. Gets out. And I just added the sound mix. And he's like, ah. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> How you doing? Here's your shit. And I just enjoy adding sound to eight millimeter movies. I just it's, a lot of it's, fun. It's like when I'm preparing it, like the sound mix, like it just pops in my head. <laughs> mm-hmm. And like it's, as soon as I see it, I'm like, I know what I'm doing with this. It's a gift, Mike. Yeah. It's just like you know. So Andrew, I'm glad, and I hope that you know when this this came in in April 2023 this year. Oh wow. I'm really happy. The ink is still wet. I hope you have uh, had as much fun yeah. as I have. We'll do one more letter before we do our topic. This is from Steve Moore. Stevie Moore, Stevie Moore, riding through the night. When did this come in? This is from, uh, oh, this is from September 22nd. This is only like two months oh, old. Oh, okay. This oh, is fresh. Put it at the bottom of the pile. Yeah, we'll read it next summer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Steve Moore. What's your Instagram? Steve E. Me. Just wanted to say hi. Hi, all. I am so late to the party that is Film Photography Podcast. I have only just found you. Seriously, I'm listening to episode six currently. Wow. I wasn't even born yet. Me either. <laughs> <laughs> Your podcast is so funny, entertaining, and informative. Just wait. Yeah, wait to wait. <laughs> wait like seven or eight more years. It gets so good. <laughs> and then it goes back down. Cream it. <laughs> uh, I didn't even hear that you, yet. You literally have me <laughs> cream it. You literally have me laughing out loud while driving home from work. He's not even going to hear this for like eight years. <laughs> As a kid, I used a Yashica FX3, which I still own, 
As an adult, I went to digital SLR with a Canon 700D. I don't even know what that is. I was disappointed with the lens and sensor quality as images were never crisp or fully in focus. Then went mirrorless with Fuji X-T1. I decided that film has more soul and experimented with a couple of TLRs before going full circle back to my Yashica FX3. My goal. What's this? Wait, let's see what this let, let's see what this is. Let's just see. Good afternoon, Iron Forge. Townhouse gutter cleaning has been scheduled for Tuesday. City Fire repaired the fire panel today in the mid drive. Thank you for your patience. Mm. To repeat, press pound. Folks at home, would you like me to repeat this? <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, my what was condo. That about pound town? Something you're going this to pound town? This is my it's an alert from your condo. It's an alert from my condo yeah. association to, to tell that oh, your gutters look at have what been we're cleaned doing for you. Yes, yeah, I'm on the board. By the way, is that a secret code? We're coming to clean your gutters. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, what happened uh, here? Where Check was your I? Fire panel. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> I decided that film has more soul and experimented with a couple of TLRs before going full circle back to my Ashika FX3. I am now going to start shooting with my father's old Asahi Pentax Spotmatic 2. Oh, yes. And I think in America it was a Honeywell. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. We know about those. Yes, we um, do. I purchased a battery off eBay to replace the old Mercury battery. We know about that. For yes. the through the lens meter. Hearing you talking about the new phenomenon of the Google. <clears throat> and eBay with Wonderman in the early episodes is so funny. The new phenomenon of Google. Exactly. <laughs> it is so funny as it is such an everyday occurrence now. Sorry I didn't find you sooner. Please send me some 35 millimeter film. <laughs> <laughs> Add some 120 film while you're at it. Please consider me for a camera giveaway. Ha ha ha. Oh, then he says, ha ha ha. Only joking, as no doubt that stopped happening many years ago. Yes, it did. Keep up the good work, informing and entertaining. You are awesome. Best wishes, Steve. Steve, I'm going to. We could do a camera giveaway. We could. We Why could. not? Not today, though. No, I'm not too today. tired today. Uh, what happened is those giveaways... You could give turn- me that Jack White Polaroid. Those, those, The camera giveaways turned into the school camera donation program. I guess so. So that's what happened. You still give them away just to children's. Yes. Yes. You know, so to the child's. I, I have to, we have to figure out like how to manage that. Now, the problem is with the giveaways is, you know, it's like someone has to manage it, like... Someone has to win it, and then you have to take that and then send it to somebody. First yeah. of all, someone has to win it. <laughs> it's a whole thing. First, we have to find a camera. <laughs> then a lens. Where are you going to find a camera in this day and age? Then a battery for the camera if it needs a battery. Yeah. Does anyone listening really need a camera? It's not like someone's going to listen to maybe the podcast and not have a camera. Yeah, exactly. No, but maybe they'll you know, get it for like a child or something. <laughs> or like uh, you know, a teenager that wants to get into it. And they don't Maybe. want to spend the money or give them their camera. Okay, one more letter. Here we go. All just, right. Just read the yellow. I know part. how to read, yeah. too, just to let you know. Yeah, I know, but that's... You, you read this bit. Of the show, but Thanks. Dave, Chris Davenport. How to pronounce your name? Chris Davenport. That was well done. Message. Last week, I discovered your podcast for the first time. OMG! What rock have I been living under? The information Same is... Same the last guy. The information <laughs> is amazing. <laughs> I have never heard of the Google or eBay before. What? No, no, no. no. (laughs) The information is amazing. The knowledge that you folks pass on is vital to film people. The Google. So nice to hear and talk with people who live, love, laugh, and speak film photography. I've been photographing since 1965. I I never really left film, but had to go digital when the film began to die off. But behold! Music in the background. (laughs) FPP has renewed my faith in film humanity. Three exclamation points. Mm. I am back at it in spades. Can't get enough of my Nikon F. Yes. And Pentax 6.7. Yes. Mm. And now I can use my 6.20 and my TLRs. Do you guys... Oh, boy. Oh, no. Do you guys... I saw 16 millimeter. Do you guys sell 16 millimeter (laughs) for my Minolta 16? Yeah. Yes, we do. You... Yeah, we do. You have that? Yeah, it comes on little 25 foot... I know. Yeah. I've been hoarding mine. I didn't know you could get it. Yeah. Now I'm going to start shooting it. Cool. And how do you, how would you develop a uh, Minolta 16? Like, in, do you have like... I have a 16 millimeter you development do, tank. It, no, you <laughs> no, have the, like the little reel for 110 reel. That's what you have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's great. I, I have this really cool Honeywell Nikkor developing tank. It's a plastic one, but it'll do everything. It'll do 120, 127, 35... Uh, 127 and 16. 110, well, 110 and 116, or 16, yeah. It'll do everything in one spool, which is really cool. I love that thing. Is that made and by it, it'll do two rolls. So I, like, I could do a roll wow. of 110 and a roll of 35 at the same time. Was that made by Ronco? Ronco's Boogie Nights, the best disco album ever made. It was made, it says Honeywell Nikkor on the outside. I've oh. never seen another one like it. I love it. Anyway, um, 
well, that's the part you said to read. But then he also says, the people on your podcast are great, but I won't read that part. Oh, we know that. I could go on and on and on and on and on and on, blowing sunshine up your skirts on your podcast. It's such a great treat to hear people talk about film cameras and blend it with, and there must have been a second page. Oh, here it is. And blend it with technology today. I won't rest until I've listened to every one of them. I started with your recent podcast, and now I'm in the 270s range. Oh, he's going backwards. Wow. Okay. He's going to bump into that other guy. <laughs> uh, keep up the great podcasts, and I'm sure you'll hear from me often. Bookmark my name. I'll be your best poster child ever. Is his name Bill Davenport? <laughs> his name is Bill Poster Child. Oh. Chris Davenport Chris from Davenport. Idaho. All right. That's pretty exciting. Two guys in a row who, like, you know, just discovered the FPP. And Coming one's listening back. forward and one's listening backwards. They're going to have such completely different <clears throat> impressions of the show. I always recommend going backwards because yeah. if, you, you, if you start with episode one, let's say, I mean, it's, just, it's like the Stone Age. Like, we're ranking on Dwayne for having dial up. Yeah. Like, the, the <laughs> folks listening, I mean, folks listening, do you even know what dial up is? Whoa. Dial up modem? Do you know what that is? Well, I was like, I'm waiting for an answer. Yeah, there's, no, there's a lot of talk about the Impossible Project, which no one these days yeah. is going to know what it was. There's like a whole year where it's like impossible. All we talked about was impossible. Polaroid film cameras. And yeah, yeah, and then all the formats that you can't experience anymore: the Spectra, the yeah. Polaroid 500, oh, yeah. the F100, pack film, pack film, and then all the formats that you can't experience anymore: the Spectra. The yeah. Polaroid 500, oh, yeah. the F100, pack film, pack film. Oh, pack film. All right, Coronet, one, two, two, oh, that's pretty exciting. Oh, my God, we're still talking. Because, yeah, we got to wrap this up soon because it's getting like... Yeah, I forgot. Yeah. I forgot we so, haven't even talked about It's almost Christmas. Yet. Yeah. <laughs> Coronet 1220. So I've never heard of this Where'd camera before. Where'd you get before. this guy? Yeah, Nobody happened? has. Well, this... It, it uh, looks like a brownie. It's, it's like a tin brownie. Oh. This is... Um, uh, this came from an, an honest-to-God boot sale in, uh, like, Birmingham, UK or something. Um, and uh, it is... Like a faux TLR type. So if you think about your Kodak, what were they called? Like the Dual Flex? Dual Flex, yep. So stuff like that. So it's got a little viewfinder that's Small. supposed to pop up on the top. Oh, look at that. And you shoot down through it. But it's just, it's just junk. Um, it's a basically, it's, it's a box camera with a centered viewfinder is really what it is. So uh, it, uh, it was made in uh, circa 1950. Um, they were made in um, uh, Birmingham, UK. Uh, there was a base model and a deluxe model. This is the deluxe model. Oh. So, uh, top, draw that. Let me start from the top. Two different focal ranges. So if you want close-up or if you want to do far aways. How close-up is close-up? Five feet? Close-up is seven feet to infinity. Okay. And far away is eight and a half feet to infinity. <laughs> So for, that's useless. Yeah, it is. All it's doing is changing it from F16 to F22. Oh, that's literally all it's doing. That's interesting. Stupid. But, that, but that's good information. It's good information because when I was doing, when I was testing it, I just like loaded it up and went and shot it without reading about it. And I thought, oh, the close up must be like three or four feet. No. So I, everything came out blurry. I'm like, what the hell? And then I read, I'm like, oh, that's stupid. Like they may have well, they may as well have just made it like a, a yeah. sunny cloudy, right? Rather than a, like a near and a far. Is the regular camera a, a version of that come without those two focal distances? Uh, I forget if the base model does or doesn't. Um, so the base I, model would be the one to go the, to. What, what's cool about this one that the base model does not have is this actually has um, a... Oh, if I pull out time. This has... And I pull that out, and then I push this. It has a built-in... I don't know if you can see it. It's got a built-in green filter that you can pop on. Can oh, you see it's green? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. For so black and white film. It's got a built-in green filter that you can pop out. Okay. Which is very odd. Um, and then it's got an instant or a time setting. Okay. The way you shoot, it's just auto-cocking, like this little thumb lever that's on the, it's on the side, and it's kind of hard to push. So that guarantees that every picture you take will be cockeyed, like it's mm. impossible to shoot. There's no, there's no tripod mount. No tripod mount. So very it, strange. So like every picture on my frame was like off by like three degrees, because it kind of like jerks to the side when you try and shoot it. How do you, how do you advance the film? It's got this little miniature knob on the side like classic oh, it's got the red window in the back oh 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 um and then the construction of it is very like i said very tinny it feels like a stamped toy from like the mm. 1930s i can't even get it open there we go so everything is very just like sort of chintzy and tinny um and when you put it back together like you have to like, you have to, like, like jam it, a, it in there yeah you have to jam it in there and twist it it does take 120 or 620 film which is cool 
Now, is there any type of a lever or button you have to push to load 120 or 620, or just takes both? Simply? No, it's just the. If you look at the little the little winder tab, it's just got two sets of tabs. Oh, look at you can that. See, there's a close in yep. set for the 620 and a and a wider set for the 120. Every camera should have oh, that. Oh, look at that! Yeah, and this thing's on a spring, so it only winds one way. That's really. Yeah. yeah, every camera could be this. They could, yeah. It's it's a really nice little design. So it takes 120 or 620, which I thought was kind of cool for a British company to do f- for basically film that was only made by Kodak. Hey, what would you pay for it, mate? Uh, well, uh, back in the 1950s, it was conceivable that Ilford film was that was available. Oh, yeah. I thought only Kodak ever made 620. I thought it was just a Kodak oh, film. Oh, yo, no, no, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, so it's interesting that this that they would have catered to the Kodak. I guess Kodak was bigger there than I would have thought. But. I guess 620 film was so big that... How big was it? <laughs> well, Kodak switched... It was five bigger than 120, Kodak anyway. Kodak wanted proprietary film, so they just changed that spool so they would have... So yeah, 620 was huge so in the U.S. crappy. And I'm guessing there were 620 films in, in the U.K. as well. It's like something Elon Musk so would do. So they had to adapt. So they had to adapt, so they made a camera that took both, which is very smart. Yeah, yeah, it was a really good idea. The uh, the only other thing I was reading, uh, I did find, I forget who it is, Mike, Bucks, Mike, Mike Butkus or somebody has the actual original manual for oh, it. Oh, he definitely has it. And it does say, oh, and it actually says on the top here, use separate close-up lens for subjects between three and six, eight meters. foot six from camera, which th- it, it'll take meters? like a little push on. Yeah, it's weird that they used feet there, but because they do in, in England. Uh, it's weird. They mix they mix their metrics with their Americas. But it's, you can use a little push on, like a little bayonet pre- uh, the push-on filters mm. they used to be able to get for the old Kodak brownies and things. Yeah. Oh, I have a couple of them. In the yeah. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you could put a close-up filter or something on it. Otherwise, uh, the pictures it takes are not bad, like we were talking about two hours ago. Compared to the brownie. Yeah. It, it makes... I've only shot the FPP X-ray through it, and then um, my girlfriend shot uh, a roll of Fuji 100... Uh, what's it called? 100F Provia or whatever it is that we cross-processed, which came out really cool, too, with... That has a very sort of lomography, streaky, purpley, light leaky mm-hmm. look. Um, it's a very hard camera. Like, you know, everything's very hard. It's very sharp edges Sharpie, and it feels yeah. tinny. Would yeah. you say it was made? When? In, in England? Yeah, in England, yeah. How many did they make? A lot of them? Was <clears> it popular just this camera? one. <laughs> no, I, I think they're pretty common because if you Google it, there's tons of reviews of them. If you look them up on eBay, oh. there's a bunch of them for sale on eBay, but they all seem to be in the UK. The Google. Google. So it's it's not an uncommon camera. I think it is sort of like the British equivalent of like a Kodak Duoflex, mm-hmm. where you can find them around, but it doesn't really do anything special whatsoever. How much did you pay for this? Uh, it, it was a few pounds at yeah. the boot sale. I don't think it was more than five or ten. Um, and then uh, if you look them up on eBay, they, like I said, they're all pretty much for sale in the UK. They range anywhere from like ten to thirty dollars, mm. and then if you, if you want to ship one to the U.S., bucks. it's going to be twenty or thirty dollars shipping too. But and now that you've shot a few rolls in it, does it become a shelf queen? Yeah, I don't have any use to, to shoot it again. Okay, because uh, like I said, Hattie actually shot a couple rolls through this herself. She she was having fun with it, but she doesn't have a lot of experience with this kind of camera. And I said, okay, let me let me get something else. And I literally grabbed one of my Kodak Duoflexes. And it just immediately feels like a Hasselblad compared to this thing. Yes, like, it's like, it feels so solid, and the the shutter sound is really it's like good. Butter, on it. yeah, it's easy to handle. The viewfinder is easy to look through, and, and she was like, "Oh, I didn't realize, you know, how junky this was." I'm well, like, yeah. did either you or your girlfriend experiment with multiple exposures? Uh, I did accidentally. Yeah, but no, no. The first, the first two shots I took. It's been so long since I used one of these old cameras. I forgot to advance the film. Stoops. Because I'm so rusty. Mm. Mm. But um, mm. yeah, I don't have any real need to shoot it again. It's okay. It's cool to have. It's cool to have a camera that wasn't made in the USA or Germany or Japan. You know, I don't have very many British cameras, but right. I don't what, need to. Why not? There just weren't that many. Oh, I have like a. I have this. I have the. I have the Spectrum. I have this, and I have uh, a f- like a four by five technical view camera that was made in England. That's mm. my two. My McMurdo. Mm-hmm. That's my two. British cameras. Well, that's it. Yeah, it's, it's you know, folks. Let us. Uh, we'd like to hear from you. Podcast at filmphotographyproject.com. Oi, it's nice to know you know what you're up to. Uh, you know, how, you know how you stumbled upon the FPP. How long have you been listening? Are you listening and, forward and, or backwards? And what uh, cameras you've uh, been shooting through the years? Yes, yeah, that's right. 
How uh, about how about some people write in about the films you're using? Yeah, what film stocks yeah. are you are you using? Any low ISO people? Yeah, out if there? you're a low ISO person, write in and help me to show Mike that there are people who care about it, even though he says there's nobody but me. About low, yeah, about yes, exactly. I, you know, I don't feel like hearing about Portrait 400 or Cinestill 800 T. <laughs> Like you know, that's why I'm like always ragging on like Kodak Gold Max or whatever. I'm like, ah, it's just boring. I want weird stuff. Yes, although the, uh, although you know, when you first came, returned to the show, you were shocked that like Max 400 is like a cult film now. I know it's just easy. Yeah, but, I mean that's like you know five or six, seven years ago when I was shooting a lot, um, like Fuji Superior 200 and 400, you could get at Walmart for like five bucks for four rolls or whatever, and it was just easy. So I shot tons of that, but it's just boring. It's good for testing cameras because you, you, at least you can really see what the camera's doing rather than the film, but it's just boring. Um, but uh, Boring. Yeah, I like the, I like the oddball stuff. Yeah, there's, a, there's a wide latitude of low ISO films that you can explore. Yeah, I either use weird cameras with normal film, or I use weird film in really good cameras. Mm. So that's my two. Well, I hope everyone didn't eat too much today. Everyone's sitting on the couch with I like know I didn't the, with their pa- <laughs> with their pants unbuttoned. Like, Ugh. what's what's that film over there underneath the uh, X-ray? Oh, check it out! You're oh. gonna love the package. One twenty. Yeah. John, I'll load you up with some film. Oh, look at that. That's Fantastic, what we were just right? looking at. That was that? That was the, that was the, the train. train stuff. Yeah, that's that's x ray. On 120. Nice. Yeah. Who did that? That's This is all Paige, Paige, Paige Davis. <laughs> Paige so Davis great. design. Oh, really? It's beautiful. That's awful. Yeah, the yeah. swirl is nice. <laughs> so, John, why don't I give you, would you consider like having your Olympus Stylus Epic and like shoot like some BTS, like just some snaps while we're yeah, K pop? Absolutely. We're, we're doing a 16 millimeter film test what, with tomorrow. With the 25. Uh, ISO film? Yeah. Yeah. That's as low as you can go. Yeah, that'd be a lot of fun. I'll do that. That'll be great. But it's got to be, like, sunny. It's going to be sunny It's going to be full sun. Tomorrow. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I guess you... I may have to run out and go pick dark. up a birthday cake, but, yeah, I can do it. Okay. All right. Where do you where do you get the birthday cake picked up from? I think we're going to have to go to... Uh, what's the place? Cold Stone Creamery? Oh. She wants an ice cream cake, my nice. daughter. Do they like make, they put the cake and they like squish yeah. it up? <laughs> I guess so. I don't and then reform it into I a didn't, cake. <laughs> I didn't think that the sto- Stone Cold Creamery still existed here in the U.S. Stone, stone, stone Cold Steve Creamery. <laughs> <laughs> they they <laughs> closed Steve so Austin many of them. Creamery. There used to be so many of them. Really? They started closing yeah, them down. There's still one on Bellevue. Is Montana. that right? I think there's one in Jersey Gardens. That's the last time I saw one. Yeah. It's fun. You go in there, folks at home. This is Sto- Stone Cold Steve Austin Creamery. 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 You go in there and they like take you pick something and then they mush it together. Put all your ingredients on a slab. Instead of giving you stone. giving you ice cream in a bowl, they smush up your ice cream and then put it in a bowl. It doesn't make any sense. They put the ice. They put the Oreo cookies on the ice cream on the cold slab and they chop it up and they mix it in they slap it in a bowl and it's only $20 yeah, exactly. so speaking of like you know FVP being so old you know 10 years ago uh, the, the yoga to- yoga yogatoriums there's only one left 16 they, handles oh my god there were like yogurt places like every corner had every other yogurt, yogurt. Yeah. yes so John and I would go visit of course Mr. Lee and next door to Mr. Lee was a yogurt place yeah. I missed that place a good one yeah. You get your yogurt, and then you pick the toppings, and then you weigh it, and then they pay you. <laughs> and then you pay your $16. It's only $20. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, that was 10 years ago, so it was only 16 back then. Yeah. Yeah, that was. Yeah. That was now it's scam. all nail salons. And, uh, yeah, you I go in, you take, a bo- you take a bowl of nails, you weigh it. <laughs> what other kind of places? Nail salons. And what else? I, eyebrow threading yeah, I joints. I don't know what that's. All I, don't, about. I never heard about that. I don't, yeah. I don't understand what they do. It. I've seen it. It's, it's like they're doing some sort of trick with threads. They yeah, they're adding know. eyelashes to you or something. Thank I don't know God, what I don't know what they do. <laughs> so, well, folks, we'll uh, see you on the that's other it. side. Thanks, thanks for coming. And I, I hope you're thankful for the things that you're thankful for because I know I'm thankful for the things I'm thankful for. Yes. This is not unlike another famous Thanksgiving episode. Do you remember the story of John Alden and Priscilla Mullins and Captain Miles Standish? This isn't like that one at all. I've been digging deep in the Smooth Sailor Library. Oh. Oh, yeah? Yeah. High Tide went on. Going back to, like, 2008? No, like 2011, 2012. That's the good, that's the good time. Yeah. That's and I have to, spot. I picked those because... The new, new studio. A uh, real quick shout-out to our musical directors, the Smooth Sailors and the Darren Riley. Yes. So on, I'm, right now I'm on Spotify. 
Spotify. And I know that the Smooth Sellers are on Spotify. The Smooth Crew. We are? But yes. not, not all of our stuff, obviously. Let me see, it's Darren. Over like 700 songs or something? 2,000. Like Ballard. What? Yeah, there's like 2,000 songs. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm putting uh, Darren Ballard Riley, Riley into Spotify. Let's see what comes up. Uh oh. So you can't even use his music because they, they nail you. Yeah. Well, I, it's difficult on YouTube. Do you have to like pre fill some paperwork and things? It's got to be a pain in the ass. <laughs> Ballard. Ballard artist. Let's see if this is the, our Ballard. It's got to be. No. It's, oh, he yes, it is. the Let's one see. named Ballard, yeah. Manifesto. But I think there are a few Ballards. I thought you were playing our music. What are you talking about him for? <laughs> <laughs> like, here's. In case you didn't know, Popeyes has reintroduced its famous cheese sandwich. And since it's rolled out on Sunday, there have been a number. <laughs> he opened the song with that. Remember people getting killed in Popeyes. Popeyes? Yeah, for the, yeah. For the sandwich. He opened it up with the Popeye. Let me do that again, really quick. You should say, "You should say, oh, here's the latest from Poncho," and then just play your your like a uh, condo message again <laughs> 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 with some music over it. <laughs> oh. All right, let's see. Uh, Mike likes anything that's driving like that. Well, I do. And retro sounding. Oh yeah, totally. like the shittier the synthesizer and drum machine, the better. <laughs> The smooth. That's him running out with a skinny tie, <laughs> leaping over the door of his Carmen Gia. Here we go. Exactly. <laughs> See? Right? Uh, Spotify. Smooth Chrome. Oh, oh, Smooth Chrome. Yeah, that's, oh, that's that one first. album. Yeah. Have you guys, do you, have you been getting your pennies? Your royalty of pennies? Even I if haven't, we were getting We haven't made a penny yet. I don't know where it goes to. Dane probably, ha- Dane's probably hoarding all the dollars. <laughs> Dane's got the, all the pennies framed on his wall. How about <laughs> that's great oh that's a good one what's that one Tammy that's, I love a parade no that's uh, wait is that a, that's a thar she blows, oh, thar she the, blows egg. the egg oh thar she blows the egg and I, have, I will tell you folks I don't know if you guys did this but it is called My Little Pony on, yeah. sp- on Spotify it's not My Little My Little Pony not on Spotify oh, it's, oh really it says Pony Pony oh somebody typed it in pony. wrong what number is yellow? <laughs> what number is yellow? I remember that conversation. Uh, yeah, yeah. We were tracing the mic cables and we were trying to figure out where the yellow cable was Anti- plugged buy in. Anti-buy flat. Anti-buy a flat. Anti- this one. Antiba flat. That's a good one. That's a driving one. B for bombers. That, that's this one, yeah. Oh, I've got that sound machine. Uh, dog Dagwood double cock. <laughs> That was what that was. Uh, we're talking about the RB67 that you have to cock the lens and the body. Uh, that was double cock. Uh, the, that. The dra- this is a long album. Dragon Lady Walk. Uh, that was the. Uh, her her the, daughter takes lessons at my store. Does she really? Yeah. That's where our Dane would used to go to buy, uh, what they call them? Singles? It's, Lucy's? Uh, Lucy's. <laughs> yeah, buy, I see her every week. I'm buy, my uh, friends with her. Go, go to her store and buy a can of beer and a Lucy. I buy vodka from her. She takes piano lessons from you me. Got, um, there you go. It all works. Marty Smooth's Day. <laughs> And last but not least, drive heave ho. <laughs> dry, dry heave ho. If you go to if you go to the website and uh, you could just spend time looking just at the titles. Our titles crack me up more than the music. And I think I think the actual ar- the big archive. I think that's thesmoothsellers.com. dot com. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just one word, yeah, and that's the, all two thousand. Thesmoothsellers.com. dot com, and of yep. course Darren Barrel da- Darren <laughs> Darren Barrel. <laughs> Darren Ballard, Ballard Riley. Riley. If you type that in Google, you'll come up with his band camp. He, he did, we did a couple of songs with him, didn't we? Yeah. Smooth Sailors? Mm-hmm. Yeah. There was a we collab. don't have the rights to them, though. Uh, <laughs> We're not allowed to listen covers? to them. Anytime I want to listen to them, I, I email Dane, and he sends me the link, and then I lose the link. I don't understand. Uh-oh. Remember, he came, he came over, and yeah. Darren came to the studio, but they're not in our full archive of oh, really? sounds. You sure? Yeah, because... Because they were Darren's songs, so... Uh, uh, I have them in a the folder. If you oh, I, I, I can never find them when I need them. We did Father Christmas, didn't we? We did a Christmas song every year. But he sang specifically on Father Christmas. Oh, he Christmas. was there for that Christmas one, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Which was a good one. We, what, we occasionally did covers. Remember we did uh, Baby Lemonade? <laughs> oh, that was awful. I think this is the... Uh, <laughs> Baby Lemonade! Baby Lemonade! I think this is the 10-year anniversary of Darren coming to visit. Oh my God! Really? 2013. Yep. Wow. Yeah. He was supposed to come right before the pandemic hit. Yeah. Well, it's still time. I went and saw him. I saw him a couple months ago. Oh, come on down, Darren. Maybe because you saw him, that satisfied the need to see anybody. He else. got all the American he needs. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. 
It's like, all right, I've had enough. Can you go? Cheers. All right, very good. Ta-ta. We said half an hour ago we were done, but... Yeah. Oh, we, oh, we got to go, because I have to edit this. And it's gonna oh, yeah, I got things. I gotta, oh, yeah. So okay, we'll go. see you guys. Here's a great oldie but goodie. It's all in the past now.